Yo, so these latest drafts from T1 have been completely unhinged to the point where I just came out of the retirement home to kind of want to yap about it a little bit and just kind of break down some of the interesting drafts that went down between this match between T1 and Damwon. And as you know, T1 has been going through a lot of issues internally, not because of their fault, but they because of a lot of the internet attacks that they've been going through. But this has not stopped them from absolutely cooking the books and in some ways it might make it even better for matches like this where teams like Damwon don't actually have much information anymore because T1 have not been playing league so let's just jump right into it if we look in here it's a three game series because T1 actually 3-0 and I think it's super interesting because T1 and DK actually deploy very interesting solutions to uh, a lot of the potential picks that usually go unpunished in this case and like it just shows how unhinged these guys are and they do not care but you know there's usually a level of confidence that comes behind that and i think that's kind of what it is here and i really wanted to point out why these picks are so smart and to start actually it's a bit of a smart draft from damn one so let's talk about this bands are nothing too special with this current meta um rexai zeri have been going up in priority because of the rexai top buffs with the jungle flex as well as um zeri just kind of being stronger relative to the field. These bans on the side of Damwon are nothing special as well because they're very, very commonly banned against T1 ever since the start of the split. So we're going to jump into later on in the draft. This is the first inflection point we need to talk about here because T1 pick three ranged uh, champions at the very beginning. So this kind of urges DK to kind of do something about it because normally you're like, there's no way this is allowed, right? Because you reveal all three of your sort of lane setups here. You're blinding Orianna, you're blinding Callista, you know, which is fine, but, and you're revealing your TF top. So this, what this does is it, it puts pressure on R3 for Damwon because they can only really pick a good answer into one of them. And then T1 are probably gonna choke out their options for the remaining two. So we see the bans continue. They, they focus on mid matchups and they wanna uh, prevent Showmaker from getting a favorable matchup that's easy. And, you know, DK actually have a lot of opportunity to answer. So they respond Jax into the um, TF. This could be a bait because now they have, then they end up picking Camille support, which is actually not bad here. Kind of synergizes. It's like a Walmart version of some of the other uh, supports that go in a lot. And I think this is pre-nerf. I correct me if I'm wrong. So Camille support is still pretty decent here. And they, they decide to go for a more forward option. Where it gets really spicy is this Diana R5. And one, this is the correct slot to pick it. So kudos to Damwon for doing that. And this is because this is a comp defining pick. And the reason for this is because most mid laners, you know, the, the safe ones, Azir, Oriana, Corky, you know, you can do whatever, you can play whatever direction, you can fit into whatever comp. It's not really a big deal, That's just, which is why they're blinded so often. However, Diana is not that option. She's very aggressive. She goes in a lot. She's been picked into a lot of these matchups where she fares actually decently well because of her Psychopath trades. But her usual downfall is obviously she can only really play the game in one direction. But when you pick it R5 and you decide that it's actually a really good pick there, then you can actually go for these pivotal things. It doesn't end up working out. Uh, spoiler alert, they get bodied. And you know it's probably just because of some of the comp priorities and T1 getting their pivotal picks just you know, some things can't really change off of that. So I think it's totally fine. And, you know, Zay's drawing draft resources here to make room for the rest of the team to get really good priority picks. And, you know, TF's still a priority pick. It's just like the match is bad, but it leads into a pretty good opener from T1. So let's jump into game two where let's see the adjustment. Damn one are like, all right, so we got our counters into the TF. Didn't work. So we're just going to get rid of it. So they actually nuke a lot of the champions from the first draft, they end up giving Senna instead. Ash is also open. So T1 go for usually what ends up being a death sentence for a lot of enemy teams, which is the Senna Azir combo. And nothing special from them. They respond to Nautilus Theory and you know, they basically reveal nothing, right? And where this gets interesting is that they save top for five, nothing too special. They go Vagar into the T1 comp. Interesting because they do get outranged with Senna Azir in like scaling range. So it's a little bit of ambitious pick to begin with, but where it basically, where, where the crutch pick where T1, you can see even in Zeus's face, he's like, like it's crazy, you know, like he, he goes for the vein five here. And 
for, for preface, it's an excellent matchup, one of the most disgusting matchups. It's like TF top into Cassante, but on crack, because it's even harder scaling, and uh, Cassante can't really itemize against Vayne at all, because of percentage true damage. So it's just a doomed lane from the beginning. And again, you kind of see this from T1. They, because Damwon feel obligated, they have to ban other things, like the Orianna, like the Twisted Fate this time. Now T1 just get their free picks in terms of Sanazir, and then it pushes all of the rules back once again. So I'm not sure if it's like like DK are a little bit drafting not to lose versus drafting to win, especially with um, three picks that are essentially just showing nothing. They're like all safe, which is fine, but you're not garnering anything. You're not trying to gain anything from this draft. I would have liked to see more of um, more picks to kind of be able to force advantages against T1 because if you're matching their game I think um, if, in terms of just normal front to back it's it's really really hard right now especially with the way they pilot things like the Senna and it's a it's really tough and you, even if it is a champion like Sejuani in the bottom lane right you do you just so many things that T1 can pilot and variations of that that make them so much more successful with it game three let's jump in and yet again I would say it's another sort of T1 defining draft. So they ban Senna this time, they drop the TF ban, they're like, it's chill. Um, this time, T1 go for their Ash, which has been basically let through the entire series, but they're still one of the only teams that you have to think about that they play Ash. And because this affects a lot of the Callista chains, so DK end up opening Callista here, they go for the Ash pick. They don't know if it's Ash, AD, or support yet, technically, because um, they can flex it both ways. It is a little bit discouraged because Varus is banned, but we've seen them go with other combos and variations of this before, so you can't really count it out. So they go Callista Rel, and they end up going for the Ash AD carry instead. So, again, another similar draft in terms of just the impenetrable front to back fortress, and it usually when you see the draft go in this route, it's kind of spelling checkmate, and it, it's really hard because there's so many picks that you know, damn one have to worry about in order to not prevent this from happening. And they just have permanently winning lanes. That's the biggest issue here, right? And the problem with that is that T1 is a team that generates advantages through creative picks where no teams are usually willing to kind of venture into that. And I think that's kind of the name of the game here. As long as you're creative and you're confident and you know like what works and how you can pilot that to victory. I think that's the main thing here. And it just shows that T1 is so much better than a lot of the pack here, both in terms of creativity and following through on it. So I just wanted to point that out. Thought that was cool. See you guys.